Mina. So, uh, Mina protocol um, is the smallest blockchain in the world. It's the what they call the succinct blockchain. Um, there are some massive benefits to this in terms of the ability to work uh, fast. There is one downside that I don't think has necessarily been considered too much uh, that I want to talk about in this video, but I think there's still a lot of potential for this to rise well. Before I get into it though, uh, if you're new here and you don't know what this uh, spreadsheet is, these were the first 26 coins that I did videos about on this channel. In the videos, I showed myself buying these coins. These were coins that I expected would make a lot of cash. If you had done the same, if you had put just $100 into the coins when I released the videos um, and then sold them after about 16 months, your total profit in under a year and a half would have been over 123 grand, which is pretty bloody good. Now, I sold these, but I don't uh, share the coins that I'm in on YouTube anymore. I share that on my website, which is copymycrypto.com. So when I find coins that I think are going to make me a lot of money, um, I get in on them and I tell my members about the coins and they can copy along. What this means is the members make the exact same profit as me, but they don't have to do any work. They can see my entire portfolio all the time. Um, and the site has thousands of members. Uh, and the reason for that is the, that they're making great money in crypto. If you go onto the site, you'll see what they've made. Uh, you can also see the things I've said in the past as well. It's all public record, so you can verify it all. We're in a bull cycle right now. And if you do not have your portfolio sorted, now is actually the time because we've got halving very, very soon. And if you do not get the ball rolling and get the portfolio sorted in a couple of months, you're going to have missed out on tons of profits. So if you go and you read copymycrypto.com, I think you'll realize it's a service that you've got to try. Now, Mina. So Mina is the succinct blockchain. It's minimal. It's built to curtail computational requirements that are needed in order to run dApps if, um, more efficiently. Uh, Mina has been described as the world's lightest blockchain since its design uh, size is designed to remain constant despite growth in usage. Uh, the Mina network is only 22 KB as opposed to the 300 gigabyte blockchain that is Bitcoin. Um, now they use zero knowledge um, snarks, which is the proof that enables someone to authenticate info without revealing the information. Now that for me is a really good implementation. It also means there's a level of privacy uh, within everything. Um, and there is a good, really big positive that I'll talk about. Um, however, enabling a user to trace uh, the platform back to its Genesis block is impractical in a large network because Mina incrementally computes snarks that concentrate only on the last few blocks. It means that the end users check the um, compressed proof instead of a block's entire transaction history. Um, now, positives and negatives, right? So big positive here, big, big positive is this. It's just the fact that you know, because of the ZK snarks that they implement, authentication can happen without revealing information. That's a big, big plus. If you are a business, you do not want your information being revealed to your competitors or even to your customers necessarily. Um, not from the perspective of like what's charged or how much was made. And from a competitor standpoint, you don't want to reveal that information. Why the hell would you want your uh, your competitors knowing what the hell uh, people are spending their money on? You don't want that. Uh, and that's a really big plus. Like there's a reason that um, businesses have, or have been and remain to be slow entering the crypto space. Part of that is the ledger. Um, because there is a level of transparency that business does not want. The, the downside potential um, is more to do with uh, the fact that you only see compressed proofs on um, Mina rather than a, the entire history. Like it's a, it's a positive and a negative because from a downside perspective, you're going to... Mina is one of those that could, in theory, be used to 
Or no, Mina is one of those that, in theory, could be they could raise concerns. Governments, etc., can raise concerns about how people move money around on this. Not that I think there's going to be anything that happens. Like what we know with and with stuff like money laundering is majority of it happens through banks, right? It always has. But there is a potential there. I think the potential is very slim, but there is a potential there. Because you've got to understand that the majority of um, government agents are stupid. They do not know what they're doing and they will misinterpret information. We've seen that with the amount of privacy coins uh, that have been banned. Part of that is open information, bollocks. Part of that is, you know, fear mongering. But there is a potential problem there. I don't, I think, again, I think this potential is f very slim, but it's worth noting. Um, they are actually doing a, a huge network upgrade. Uh, this is known as Berkeley. This is the final step of um, before. Uh, sorry, this is the final step of their upgrade. Um, this is the DevNet upgrade before, um, which is literally focused on just a few things. One of them is basically uh, ease of um, programmability. Uh, as well as a, an, uh, an introduction of another proof system. They're also removing some of the incentives, which, you know, you got to after a certain amount of time. Um, this, again, should be a nice step in the right direction, preparations uh, for that to be complete. And then you're going to allow uh, developers to have a better opportunity to build. Uh, yeah, so not too bad, not too bad. Again, tiny, 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 tiny blockchain. So in theory, it should be really, really easy, really fast for DAP, DAPs to actually run. Um, now, it's worth noting, look, we're, I, one, of, one of the downsides of MENA as of right now is I think this is one of the, for, for the size of its market cap, is a really underdeveloped ecosystem as of right now. Um, really, really underdeveloped. Uh, and if we check where what they've got up and running at the moment from a, from a crypto perspective, you know, one dex um, from a gaming perspective, we'll check we'll check more of the, the these guys are not going so much into crypto game like crypto in the traditional way. Capture the flag, mean arena. Okay, uh, let's have a quick look at NFTs, and then we'll focus on where their attention lies. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of NFTs, C -po, pronounced Sipo Ni and Mina NFT. But no, more of the stuff that they're focused on is stuff like digital ID. We've got some digital ID solutions. Um, as you can see, there's quite a few more. Um, they're focused on um, basically tools that are going to further them in the future they're not necessarily focused on the now they they seem to have a long-term view um almost reminiscent of sort of the cardano view of building which is take your goddamn time there's no rush uh which is fine and it, you know it tends to lead to to a strong um infrastructure that doesn't have too many issues not in the same way that like we've seen ethereum have issues in the past um concern wise it does slow down the price appreciation of of, of these kind of um, projects. They're also very heavy into the privacy uh, element. Now, most of this is rather to do with how um, MENA processes transactions and, and, and blocks. But again, the privacy element can be could be problematic um, from a powers that be perspective I think there's huge potential here but I think the bet at the moment if you were to invest in Mina is on potential rather than what's actually there as of right now I don't think there is enough there I also think from a chart perspective it looks bloody miserable because uh, it launched and killed it and then has not done anything since um, 
mean a scan uh, shows that there are 222,000 accounts. So there's definitely a lot of, there's at least interest here. Um, from a transactions perspective, there's definitely stuff happening. Um, but again, from app, if we just do a breakdown of apps, I don't think there's any any of these that are significantly played. So yeah, I feel I feel like the the, the current worth of Mina is for like even the current price point and the current market cap is more of a bet on its future than a bet on it than than a, a reflection of its present. Um even with that being said, I could see a world where this gets into double digits. I could see a world where this could in theory hit like 20 bucks. Uh, because there is a lot to this. They've got strong backers and they are unique. They have a legitimate USP. It's a tiny, tiny blockchain uh, that can that can do solid throughput and um, really secures the, the information without revealing. Like all of these things are massive positives. But again, I think it's kind of a bet on on its on its future and a big thing here is going to be how the developer upgrade goes do we then see a surge in development on mina which results in users being attracted to the blockchain if we do wicked it's going to do very well i think 20 dollars is a solid target um to be honest i wouldn't be looking at that getting anywhere close to that until it gets to four dollars four dollars has got to be like the initial target um because that was where we were seeing uh, a real struggle to break through after like uh, it's sort of wave in November and then four dollars is you know been a real trouble point for it. So I think four dollars is the initial target. I think there's a fair shout for twenty dollars long term. Um, but there's got to be some work done on uh, current development. Like there's got to be some projects that, like whether it's gaming, whether it's metaverse, whether it's when there is a surge in NFTs, look, I am, a, I'm not an NFT fan. I'm really not. I think they're, I think they're basically a gambler's approach to crypto. I think it's looking at a picture you like and you place a bet on it is effectively what it is. It's not, it's not what I view as investing, but there's a huge amount of money in the, in the NFT space and they could capitalize on that with growth in that area. But we've got to start seeing Mina developing in areas where people are interested. And right now, I don't think they've done that. So $4 is the initial target, but I think there's a solid shout of $20, but in game, like until it gets to $4, realistically, we can't even talk about that. Um, if you're a Mina user, what do you like about it? Is there, well, actually, you know what? If you, are there any apps, dApps, whatever you want to call them on Mina that you like? That you think is cool good that you'd like to see more of let me know in the comments down below and guys if you want to make the same profits as me in this bull cycle you can do all you have to do is go over to copymycrypto.com that's the site i run um, where i share my entire portfolio with my members when i find coins that i think are going to make me a lot of money i buy them and it means i jump onto my site tell my members the coins that i'm going to buy the profits that that those coins can have and the percentage of my money I'm going to put in. They copy along exactly, make the same profits, but don't have to do any of the research, the organization, the deep dives. I do all of that. If you want to see what they've made, that's on the site along with successes of the past and present. And it's all public record. You can verify it all. The bull market is in full flow, really. We've got halving in a week or so <clears throat> if you don't have your portfolio sorted you've got to get it done because after the after the halving the market's going to get wild so read through the site because it could definitely help you out and that's it for me have a good day bye bye